Hello. Hello. Can everybody see, hear me? I, uh, seems like every time I do live streams, I mess up something, whether it's the audio, the video or anything. So, uh, just want to give a, a quick, everyone can see me and hear me before I get going. Uh, I'll wait for one comment that says they can hear me. <laughs> so, uh, let's wait on this three, two, one. Can everybody hear me? Hear me? Cool. Awesome. So let me pop on over to the code here, or at least a screen. And if my big head here in the corner is too distracting at any point, let me know. I'll decrease the size. Uh, so I don't want to start with Formic. I guess I want to start with this library is formal that uh, someone posted. I believe the creator posted this to Reddit the other day. And uh, I looked at it and I thought, that can't be. That that actually can't be. It's It's way too easy. Um, and so I have a form on level up tutorials. I'll show you in a second. Um, this is what the form looked like before. It's super duper basic. It's just eight inputs. I mean, uh, none of these inputs are even special in any sort of way. And this is what's live right now. Uh, uh, and then we have, um, this is the new formal version. Obviously the CSS is not here yet. Uh, this is some like base CSS and probably some stuff I need to tweak. Uh, but I replicated this form in just about two seconds and deleted like 60 lines of code to do it. So I'll give you a little bit of before and after here. Let me pop open. This is the update profile. Uh, I hope everyone can read this. Let me go ahead and pop open. Actually, it will, if it'll let me do that, let's see the version history adds formal. Let's see, update profile, view file contents. Or is this the current one? It's the current one. I want to get the previous one. View, profile, compare against previous version. Okay, so this is where I added formal. And uh, I had this, this is the one on the left. This is the old, over here is the new. I had just refactored this to be using hooks and uh, I wasn't using any form library. We actually roll our own form library because I am like that. Uh, however, this library does everything I wanted to do super well. So. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit of how this differs from other form libraries too, like Formic. I know that's a huge, huge one that people are popular about. But you can see we have this basic hooks, right? First name, set first name, last name, set last name, all this sort of stuff that's normal. Well, with using this formal library, I can just nuke all of my hooks out of here now. Um, next, if I scroll down, we can actually look at some of the changes that happened to the form. So I'm using Apollo here, so that's what this mutation is. But... You can see the previous way, if we look on the left here, the previous way that we had it done was a form and then on submit, you prevent default, you grab all your data, and then you hit the API with this update user profile. And then you scroll down. And let's take a look at the actual form here. The form, I had like sort of a layout, and then I had an input with a value and a non-change and a first name. And this is, again, this is my own form library that I made, but it's nothing special. It's probably very similar to a lot of ones that other people have already made. Uh, but you can see all of these lines of code to do eight inputs, okay? So this is eight inputs with a standard React form. And if you scroll up and now look on the right, this is eight inputs with this plugin. This is eight inputs with this plugin. Uh, that's wild. I didn't have to do anything here. And let's even look at the, the wrapper here. Uh, this is just the API function, so nothing's different here. The wrapper is simply formal, on submit. And then you, it spits out an object. So I'm going to be talking, I'm going to actually, I'll do some refactoring of another form I have in this site. I just wanted to show you really quickly. You can see, just look at how many lines of code we removed. Uh, and the inputs are so not cluttered. I say first name in here, and it spits out an object that has the first name property in camel case. So anything that you have in your field as your field name, let me get rid of this and get rid of this. Anything that you have, in your field tag, so we have our field, anything that's a children here, this gets converted to uh, a camel case property that's simply just in the object profile. So to submit my stuff, I just say, oh, okay, we'll take the profile. Here's everything from the form. So it's like pretty amazing that you could see that we don't have to, one, we don't have to deal with uh, hooks. We don't have to deal with setting any sort of state. We don't have to deal with uh, names and inputs because just simply having field and then the value actually out 
outputs so much stuff. It outputs the label, it creates the box. When I type in here, when I click submit, it gets it all done. I don't even have to touch or even think about state. It's bananas. Okay. So obviously the CSS done here is not good. Uh, it will be looking like this before I push it live. Uh, but as you can see here, we just like vanquished some lines of code. So what's up with this library? It's called formal. You can find it at uh, Kozea, I believe you pronounce that K O Z E A dot or forward slash formal on GitHub. I'll throw a link to this in the chat right now, just so everybody can see it, use it, whatever, paste it in here. And again, this, uh, the creator of this posted on Reddit and I was just really amazed by it. So there's no docs really. There's a storybook, which is great that the storybook exists, but I, I do have some beef with the docs. I'm actually um, considering submitting a bunch of PRs to add in some more code examples. So you could see that this library is not, it's not huge. Uh, it gzips if you're using code splitting down to 20 KBs. So it's, it's, I think Formic is somewhere around there as well. So I can't imagine that it's that much larger than in Formic to have in your code base. It also works with uh, Draft WYSIWYG. It wor works with React Select. It works with React Drop Zone. I'm already using React Drop Zone on the site. So now I can uh, like remove with any React drop zone and have it just be a part of the form itself. I'm pretty psyched about that. And let's go ahead and look at it. There's some Webpack stuff too that you can check out, but this is the basics of it right here. You, you can import the CSS. I just actually copied and pasted the CSS into my project because I want to tweak it. Uh, and then we import formal, which is a form component, and then field from formal. And you simply just have formal on submit field login. Now you might be thinking of like, Okay, we have text inputs. So far, you've only showed text inputs, but this is a password strength type of field right here. All you had to do is say type password strength. And now, not only do we get the form, but we also get the thing that tells us if it's too short, too strong, or, or not strong enough. You can see that with no configuration, this is like one prop. And all of a sudden, we have the eye that can show you the password, turn on and off. Uh, we have the stronger. We didn't have to do anything to get this. This is so sick. I, I love it. And then again, it just spits out the object. Um, the cool thing about this one is that a lot of these libraries that try to do things easy for you and try to cover all the edge cases, they cover all the edge cases and put that into the main API. And what this does so well is that when you want a simple form, like the most basic simple form ever, all you have to do is do field and then the children field. That's it. That's it. Uh, and so you might be thinking, okay, we got password strength. That's pretty neat. Uh, what other kind of fields do we have? The docs don't do a great job of showing that off, but we come down here and we can see what kind of fields we have. You'll notice this one is required. So it's really easy to just throw a required prop on there. Date of birth. So check this one out. This is built in here. Uh, I click this, look at this map. Look at this calendar. This is gorgeous. I love it. Uh, and, and you could style this. I mean, this is just basic CSS. You could copy and paste and style this to your own. But this is a calendar picker that comes default into this form. Uh, or you could type into this input if you want, like you would expect to be able to do. I hate calendar inputs. Also, I hate form validation. And I hate form errors. I hate having to code all of that stuff. Look at this. I, just by changing it, you could see not only do we get the red, we also get the please match. So we actually get instructions here. All this stuff's configurable as well. We have city, zip code. These are just uh, another fields. But then we also have a select list. We have a select list that looks beautiful out of the box. You can uh, type in it, I think. Let me confirm that you can type in it before just declaring that. Uh, let's cut this out and say uh, North America. Yeah, you can type in it. Look at that. Uh, check boxes look beautiful price. Sure. Uh, we have, you know, you can color choosing here, show new item. Look at this, man, this is great. And one of the cool things here is that there's actually two themes. So if you're like into this and you think this is, is pretty sweet, let's actually do, uh, I think it would be, um, let's check out some of these fields. If we come to the field section, no, I don't want you to save the password. Uh, you could see all of the different types of fields are here. I'm going to maybe zoom in on this. Let's see. There we go. Uh, text field, area, email, number, password, password, strength, telephone, color. So just about anything you could possibly want. Range, money, switch, HTML, checkbox, radio. Uh, you could do drop zones in here too. Uh, this is really super slick. And again, if you don't like this theme, the CSS is there. You can seriously just modify the CSS or 
It actually bundles with two themes. One is called a clean, which is just a simple line under uh, and then the input up there. You get these little tooltip uh, question mark things up top here too that are pretty sick. Default, there we go. I'm loving this library. I have this in the code base. And again, it may, I, I hate working in forms. So uh, this really, really made me happy. Now, uh, that said, I'm not a master at this thing yet. And that's it. You don't, probably don't have to be a master at it. I'm trying to look in to see... Um, I'm trying to see how we do the drop zone because it mentions is doing a drop zone. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll have to, uh, Oh, powerful non native field based on well-known lumber. Oh, so it's not, it doesn't include react drop zone. Ignore what I said about it, including react drop zone. Um, so I'm, I'm just reading the comments here occasionally. So someone says, I like it, but there's some downsides magic. Okay. Here's why it's not magic. It's, it's not magic because it's a form in HTML. Uh, if you have a, a basic form and you you want to just output the values of that, it's really super easy to do that. And I think we've been working in React land so long that we think we have to do absolutely everything with a form. Like the last thing I want to do is write a, a, a state updater function to control my state. Um, I shouldn't have to do that. And the fact that this library abstracts that away is amazing. The fact that I don't have to write the same error component over and over again is amazing. Uh, I don't have to write any of those validations or anything like that. Obviously, other form libraries do that. But I mean, just look at, I don't want to hate on Formic because I like Formic a lot. But just look at this. You have uh, your form. One, you have a Formic tag and then a form tag. In, in this, we just simply have a form tag. Then you have this render prop. Um, and then you have to have your field and then your error message. Your field, your error message. Like, why can't those just all be encapsulated? Also, type email, name email. Okay, I get it. But like... Why couldn't this just be a little bit easier, right? Um, this is probably the reason why I didn't go with Formic is I just knew it could be easier. And and I just really love, I don't think it's magic because it's, it's at the end of the day, it's just React under the hood. Uh, there's nothing magical going on, really. It's just updating the state. It's just that you're not having to do it yourself. Um, so I, I kind of disagree that it's, it's magic in any sort of way. But again, uh, like, why do we need to do that stuff? Like, what's the purpose of it? Uh, so... Let's go ahead and uh, refactor some code here. So let me pop on over. This is the dev site. Oh, this is a pretty sweet photo of me wearing a bandana from when I was in high, was high school or college. Either way, it's a cool photo. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to give some insight into the back end of level up tutorials. I don't show off the the admin side of level up tutorials that often. So. Uh, this is going to be a nice little sneak peek here, or I guess not a sneak peek, but a little peek. So I'm going to head to the series part. Um, this is the back end. This is where I control all of my uh, courses. So you've probably seen these courses before. Um, we have all of them. You want to see something sick? This is all drag and droppable. So if I want to change the order, uh, that just updated on the front end of the site to change the order. So this thing's pretty slick. I built this all myself. You can turn off whether it's a pro or visibility um, but let's actually get into the form that I want to be doing here. So this is my series Iser form. Um, and you can see it's not styled in any particular way. No one has to look at this, but me, so this can be ugly. Uh, I built this thing to be able to build these, these cards. These are all vector based. You might not know that in the previous version of level up tutorials, these were all images. I have a drop zone that you can drop an SVG background in here. And then let's say I wanted this background to be red or something. I can change the background uh, just via this color picker. Uh, if I make it white, I can change it to be dark. I can change the logo to be Meteor, whatever I want. Uh, this this whole thing is built in React and Meteor on the back end. Um, so yeah, check it out. This is pretty sick, these little stickers. Um, this is uh, this is pretty dope. Okay, so this is the form I want to be refactoring. It's inputs and IDs. Um, and there's no download series key, so don't try to steal the series. Oh, don't look at those. Um, <laughs> uh, but check it out. This is this is it. Let's go ahead and refactor at least some of this form. I I don't want to do some of it off screen because I have this tag thing and I haven't really looked at yet. Um, actually, maybe this isn't the best form to do. Let's maybe go to productizer. Uh, maybe then no, let's do productizer and let's look at some of my products here. Uh, 
I think I broke something. Front row. Either the live stream's crapping out here. Never mind. Let's go back to the series sizer. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had this demo prepared ahead of time, but I'm, you know, switching it up a little bit. Okay, so this is the tutorial form here. Um, someone says in Formic, we can also make some magic. I think Formic is the most flexible library. Uh, there's nothing inflexible about this library. And like, again, if you want to compare the syntax, I'm again, I'm not hating on Formic. This syntax right here, look at this. Look at how much code is here. And then look at how much code is here. Like, uh, this is just Apollo stuff up here. So it doesn't necessarily account. But no, no, this is so much more concise. And uh, it, it is just as flexible. They're, you're not losing out on any flexibility. You're just losing out on the work you have to do. So I, I mean, like, again, I like Formic. I think it's great. I, I think this is better. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm in my local host here. Let's get into refactoring. I'm going to, maybe I can pop this open side by side here so we could get some dual code action going here. Um, so tutorial form, make sure this is actually the right tutorial form option pro visibility text area. Is this the one with the drop zone? This might not even be the right, right component set visibility text area, text area, start code, end code. Oh yeah. This is not the right one. Let's do admin, uh, series admin. That's the one I'm looking for. Series admin has an update series component. Yeah. Okay. There we go. This is the component I'm looking for. Uh, this is it. Okay. So let's take a look at this component. Maybe I'll try to get my head out of here because it's looking like it's uh, taking up some of the space. All right. Nice and little. Okay. So look at this form. We have, uh, again, this is not using Formic or any other library. Uh, this is, uh, this is my own library, but it's using hooks and hooks have been great for everything, right? Hooks have been awesome to, uh, have this form state set like th this, this is usually typically good, but to be honest, like this form isn't doing anything incredible here. It's simply just, you know, <laughs> it's just setting and updating form fields. And I don't want to have to do that over and over again. I just don't want to have to do it. Um, so let's go ahead and, and try this thing out. I'm going to import, I think I just need to import formal as well as, I believe it's field. Let me double check on that. Let's do it. Uh, what was that last one that I had open? Profile, update profile, profile form. There we go. Not this. Um, Oh, that's product form, profile, form, profile, update profile. There we go. Jeez. Okay. So check it out. Well, let's import formal and field. So I was just about correct. And we have this big old uh, set state, all this stuff. We have our mutation. I'm going to collapse the mutation because this is Apollo stuff. We don't need to think about it. And then we have our form. It's having to be async, it's preventing default, it waits for the update series, and then returns a little uh, a toast message, I guess you could call. So let's go ahead. I'm going to create a second form in here. So I'm going to throw some, gosh, look at this form. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at how monstrous this form is. This is a basic form. There's nothing going on in here. I hate this. Look at all that. Oh my God. Okay. So oh, I just want to have a formal tag and then let's get cooking on this thing. For instance, I have the ID and let's say the ID is just going to be a basic text field here. The text field that we have, I think it's, where are we at? Here's the card, here's the drop zone, here's the color picker. And then we have the ID. The ID actually gets an initial value of color. That's okay. We can go in here and we can say, field. And this field is simply going to be ID. Okay. And now when this updates over here, we, we should have another little form input pop in here. I'm actually not sure my compiler is even running. It is. Okay. 
Sorry, my computer's just really, really chugging along here. So you can see we have a basic ID up here. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's great. There's another basic text field. Uh, I want an initial value. I think I did an initial value on update email, update email, formal update initial value. Um, so to do that, you just pass in an object with the initial values into the formal itself. So I can have an formal prop item is equal to item. And then I can, let's say, define that item up top here. Uh, you'll see that we have this current series. And maybe that's actually a better way to do it is to just take this current ob object here. There we go. Current series. Let's see how that works. Obviously, since this is going to rebuild itself or do any of this stuff on each render, I'll probably want to just memoize this or something. But uh, it's no biggie. No biggie for right now, at least. Um, sorry, my, my refresh is taking a long time. I think this streaming is definitely hitting it pretty hard. Um, and then the ID. Where does the ID end up coming from? The ID ends up coming from... Hang tight with me here. Color, select color, select logo. Gotcha. The ID comes from playlist.id. Okay. So we'll have to add an ID property in here. ID, playlist ID, ID like that maybe, comma this. So what I'm doing here, I'm sorry if I'm I'm just thinking a lot here. This this is kind of fly by the edit, fly by the seat of my pants here. But what I'm doing is I'm basically creating an object of all the initial values, and these initial values are coming in from the playlist itself, and then but I'm passing this object into the formal item, uh, formal item prop as the object, and that submits your default. So you can see here we have our input here. Now I actually want this field to be um, read only. You can see I can type in it right now. I want this to be read only. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna bop over here and see how to do it read only. It's funny because these docs are like really nice in some ways because you can test everything out. But what I hate about these docs is that they don't show you code examples with them. And then if you go over to the, the story, it's like uh, not readable really. So uh, I would love that the docs were a little bit better. Um, and so, oh, somebody says what theme? This theme is called Level Up 2 Electric Boogaloo. Um, it's in the Level Up official package. I have two Level Up themes. If we do preferences, themes, color themes. I have this other one that's darker. So if you're like into the darker one, and then I have a lighter one. They're just both based on my, my color schemes. Um, so I'm going to try to find how to do a required field. I haven't done that. So... Go to home. Let's do a command find for required. I'm going to guess it's just simply the required prop. I should have just tried that. So required is a Boolean prop here. And so I guess I don't want this to be required. I want this to be read only. Sorry. Read only. So let's see if I can just throw read only on here and have it be read only. Again, these docs aren't great. I, I would love to do a little bit of updating for these docs. So now I have a field here. I don't know if this is, there we go. There's the refresh. Uh, I am streaming off of a MacBook Pro. So, okay. So yeah, now we have an input field, read only. Can't type in it, okay? So just, I didn't even know that that was the prop. I just guessed. And just like I just guessed uh, that um, the other thing was the prop that I just mentioned, the required. Required, I just, I just guessed it. So look at this. Look at this syntax. Come on, <laughs> come on. This is great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. What's the next input down here? We have title. So title is not read only. We can say title, okay? And the title initial value should actually populate already because title is going to be coming into the current series here. Um, I also wanted to show you guys the on submit because it's super duper easy. This is all super duper easy. I can't believe it. So now we have a type field that I can type in like this, nice and easy. Um, let's go ahead and add an on submit. You'll notice there's no submit button here. I think that's going to change after I add an on submit equal to arrow function. Another cool thing here is that we don't even need to do, um, we don't even need to do event prevent default or any of that stuff. This library has got your back and just does it all for you. So again, it's doing it all for you, which is yes. Yes, please. I would like to do less, especially around forms. So we'll just say the data is coming in here. 
and we can council log out the data. Um, so we have two fields, the ID and title. The initial values are coming in from here. We have an on submit. So let's go ahead. I'm going to inspect here, pop open the console or big old console here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. We have our, uh, even though these are impossible to read on this gray background, we have our read only field. We have our another field. Let's change the value of this. We hit submit. You could see here's the data bingo, bango. Here's the ID. Here's the updated title. We didn't have to write a single stinking line of config. We didn't have to write like any, uh, state updates. So you can already see that in two fields here, we've now been able to release. <laughs> these are both what, and these are actually already even fields that like make our lives easier by adding inputs and things like that. So if I delete these, there we go. And we can do the same thing with slug. Check it out. Two seconds. Now that I have this set up, I want to have a slug and I want to have a level. That's a number. Okay. So come in here, we can say, give me a new field. Just going to be slug. Give me a new field. It's just going to be, uh, what did I say it was <laughs> memory, uh, level. Okay. And level might have some trouble because I think the value that's coming in here is a string. Uh, but I should be able to get it going. Uh, sorry about that. My, my crazy dog, Lucy's barking in the background and this, uh, refresh is taking a long time. My computer's chugging along. You can see we have the slug in here. Now we have level two in here now, and it actually worked, uh, although it's on a number field. So let's just do, I'm going to say type is equal to number. This is me just guessing. I don't, this is how I work in case anyone wants to know how I learn things. I just, I just don't look at the docs and I try it. And if it works, then I'm really excited. And if it doesn't work, then I go to the docs. Uh, I think it's a good way to learn because it takes you a second to just say, screw it and try it. But at the same time, Hey, I, I hardly did anything and it worked. Hey, I guessed right. Submit enter. Yeah. We'll have all this information directly spit out into this data. And then you can do anything with it, including simply just, uh, running this update series, um, mutation that I want to have. So it's pretty sick. I can't even believe how fast I just did that. And now with the field slug and field number, I can come in here and delete two more of these. Boom. Get rid of them. See you later. Never liked you anyways. Okay. And I can do the same thing with SKU, download series key. Download series key is going to be a fun one because you'll notice that this is a long camel case letter or word here. So let's go ahead and do actually first. So you can actually see this stuff. It's all purple on purple. Let's bring in one of my elements. I have a card element that'll be good for this. So we can say card. I'm going to do another, by the way, uh, I know a lot of people heard me on syntax talk about my react context setup. I should do a, a live stream next week on my react context setup. If anyone's interested, it's pretty slick. You can see it sort of in action here. Um, just to say, uh, let's see. Um, where's the context? Where am I using this context? Yeah. Use context, alert context. And then I have send alert, send error. These two little functions I have that will throw in a, a nice little, a nice little thing in here. Actually, let's go ahead and send an alert on submit anyways, because that'll be fun. We have our console log. Uh, somebody says, why all the hate for forms? Uh, because forms were easy in HTML and they were easy in angular and they have never been easy in react like ever. Uh, I used to, they just, they're just so much extra code. I mean, there's just about 10 extra lines of code for every single form I've ever made in React. And I, I'm just not a huge fan of that aspect of it. So we can say sent data or save data, whatever. Save with two A's. Save, save. There we go. So this form, even though it's getting more complex, we have the number. Let's go ahead and have a, another text field type of skew. And I wanted to have one that was download series key. Now remember download series key was in camel case, but check this out. Download space series key, just like I would want it to be in the label. Like you're just typing in what you want the label to be, but it also does everything for you in terms of changing it into a, uh, uh, camel case. Somebody says the sidebar. You're talking about this sidebar. 
The sidebar is resizable. Just grab it and pull it. I don't know which sidebar you're talking about. I don't think mine is. Unless it's at the top or something. Uh, okay. Let's see. So we have the uh, read-only field. We have our editable fields. We have our number fields. And we have our download series key, of which there is none right now. And we have our submit button. Now, I'm not quite sure why it won't let me submit. It's because I have nothing in download series key. Let me type in here. Okay, now it does. Maybe I have to make this optional. I'm going to check that out. I hit submit. I don't think my alert went. Send data. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily matter anyways. Let's see at least if the console ran. Oh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so dumb. I was, I was like typing on OBS, not the, I was trying to like work on OBS, not on the actual code, which is great. Okay. So we have the objects obviously being output here with all of the info that we just set up. So, I mean, this is really the, the gist of it here is that we can now take something that is so dang complex and we can turn it into a one-liner and we don't have to worry about updating state. We don't have to worry about validations. We don't have to worry about error messages that pop in and say, hey, you did this wrong. Uh, it just works, right? And, and I'm a huge fan of that because do I want to have to write the validations and errors and all that stuff? I don't, I don't want to ever have to write that. Um, and we can check out some of the other fields here if you're interested. Again, there's a password field. The password field comes with the nice I to turn it on or off. Love that. I love that it comes for free. The password strength field is incredible. Uh, that is just for free. A telephone field, a color field. Color field is interesting because it pops open the native uh, Mac color picker. I, I actually really don't mind this um, considering I'm using an entirely another library right now to have a color picker. That said, I do like my built-in color picker here. I like this color picker. I don't necessarily want to leave it, but I could. Because look, I can make my, my thumbnail green if I want to. Um, I have to figure out the drop zone situation as well, but I'll figure that out. And uh, I don't think there's anything crazy about it. Date field, again, we, we get this nice built-in calendar with time field, uh, date, time, local, month. I wonder if you get in the month, you get a drop down in a little calendar. Okay. Okay. I can, I can do that. It's not as pretty as the other calendar, but I can do it. Um, the week, selecting a week, geez, date pickers. Who loves working on date pickers? Uh, cause let me tell you, I've had to do so much work on date pickers and I'm so, so, so not a fan of date pickers, uh, because they're all, they're all tough. Um, uh, somebody asked about internationalization. I do not know. I have no idea. Um, it's a great question. I just found this library like two days ago. Uh, the creator posted it on Reddit. I've only dug into it as much as creating basic forms, but the basic form stuff is just still so good. A money field. Okay, let's see if this calendar gets us the nice widget. Yeah, calendar gets us the nice widget. Uh, how would I format the SKU field? I personally, I have a, my own SKU system, so I, I have it just output it as a string, like really nothing fancy. If I wanted to have some uh, custom validation for it, I know you can do custom validation in this, but to be honest, like I'm the only person who's ever entering SKUs in here, so I don't really need to tell myself to have the SKU be any particular type of way. A switch. Look at this. Here's a built-in switch. Guess what I'm using? I'm using an entirely another library for a switch. I don't even know if it's in this, this thing, but I'm using another library. Uh, so this form library is not only going to reduce the code that I have to write, but it's also going to eliminate other packages that I have. Uh, that I, so I have to, less packages to worry about, less stuff to update. Here's an HTML field. Whoa, whoa, check this out. HTML field. Does that mean that it outputs HTML? Um, let's check it out. Hello. I hit hello and I hit enter and look at this. It output. Hello. Check it out. Beautiful. Wow. In HTML with the paragraph tag. This is a WYSIWYG. This thing's got a WYSIWYG in it. And, uh, I don't have to do anything to get that WYSIWYG. Heck yes. Love it. 
make me a little bit bigger here. Hello. Okay. Radios, you got it. Radio set. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of just uh oh, so it does. File field is the the drop zone. So this is React drop zone using a file field. Let's throw one of those in here for good measure, okay? I have a field of title. Let's go ahead and say this is the background and the type is going to be equal to file. Let's just see this thing in action. Let's see how cool this is. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I'm hoping this works just like I want it to. Um, this is background error. I don't know. I'll have to look into what's going on here. I have not used this, this extensively enough to know if I just throw a type field on here and it works or not. Like I said, the bummer about these docs is that they give you this. And then if you go over to the story, um, the way that they actually wrote the code <laughs> is like, to, hey, just iterate over each field with the generic props that we have. So you don't really get to see, yeah, use a type field with filter to find props. And like, okay, this is great, but this doesn't help me at all if I'm trying to figure out uh, the code that you wrote to get this to work. That said, I'm sure it's not that difficult. It just needs to be a little bit improved. That's cool. Super cool. Select field. Here we go. Select field and then a select menu. Okay, select menu is the one we saw already where you have a select list, but you can also type in it. Um, fields with initial value. Okay, so they show you how to have initial values. Oh, this is fun. It shows you a little image preview. Okay, I can deal with that. And uh, I don't know. This is pretty much it. Uh, oh, I didn't even talk about this. These conditional form stuff. You can have conditional forms in here. Uh, so look at this. Uh, okay, are you okay? Why not? Okay, why? Why not? And this whole thing is really simple. I I saw this in, in the other thing where you can actually have grouped conditionals where it's changing the input based on it. And again, you don't have to do anything. I'm just like constantly amazed by this. And again, you want to format a field? You can format it. You want to validate it? You can write your own custom validation. Um, again, these docs are going to take a little bit of, of parsing through here. But if you're liking this library, like I'm liking this library, maybe you want to help submit a pull request because I think I might do it too. Um, but yeah, I think that's really it. Um, this is really it. I mean, there, I don't want to recreate this entire form on the stream right now, but check it out. Uh, we're going to be eliminating a tons of lines of code here. I'll do a little before and after photo like I did in the last one and just tell you how many lines I've vanquished after doing this thing. So um, this is it. Does anybody have any questions or anything? I guess I don't have any more prepared. I'm going to grind away on the rest of the forms on this site uh, now with the knowledge that this thing is so insanely easy. Um, so yeah, um, any questions? If people like this live stream, I will do another one talking a lot more about my context setup because this context setup I talked about on Syntax the other day is really slick. Also, if you are... Um, form guide do to... Status connection bad. We're not saving. Um, oh, can can everyone still see or hear me? Can you still see or hear me? YouTube is being ridiculous right now. I would, uh, all honesty, I would do a formic to formal, uh, but I, I haven't. I don't use formic on my site. I'm just using standard hooks and inputs here. Um. But maybe I'll do that and maybe I'll just whip together a basic formic form and show you how easy it is. Again, I just discovered this library. It's really like kind of blown me away. Um, yeah, sorry for, for thinking that you couldn't hear me. My, my YouTube has like a big red flashing bad saying that the stream is bad. So I thought it cut out. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, any questions? Please, so Wade says, please add a, a barracuda sound for Wes. Yeah, uh, we should do that. Or at least just a chomp. 
we should have a chomp of some sorts. I think it's it's not fair. We we actually we didn't make that ourselves. I wish we wrote it, but we didn't make it. So um also I should mention I have a new course out on not even React. I have a new course out on Gridsum, which is a Vue.js Gatsby analogous library, and it's awesome. It's really slick. In fact, I love Gatsby and this thing like takes the cake in terms of simplicity, at least. The image stuff is easier, the config stuff is easier. Uh, but all around, it's great. Um, people were asking if this could be styled with styled components or emotion. That's a great question. Uh, I don't know. The CSS is just a drop-in CSS. If you want to see the CSS for this, I think I just I think I just picked it up and threw it in my globals. Although I'm not positive about that. Let's see, global. No, not those globals. Um, global elements. Let's see. I might have just thrown it in the bottom here. This is my global CSS that I'm, yeah, here it is. So I don't know if it's stylable with, uh, well, I guess this is, this is a global styled component. I don't know about the standard way of like overriding a component, uh, the way you typically do in style components. This is just in a global CSS. And I mean, you're going to be using forms all over your site. So code splitting the CSS out isn't necessarily a big deal in my mind. Um, what's my favorite React state management library or method? My favorite React state management library method is what I'm currently doing on level up tutorials. I have several different contexts. Um, well, let's see, I think it's like global state is where it lives. Global state. Yeah, I have several different contexts. So I have a login context. I have a checkout context an alert context. And then let's see show and file or not finder sidebar show and sidebar. Check it out. So I have all these different contexts, and then uh, I wrote my own thing. I'm calling Ludux. <laughs> yes, this is ridiculous. Uh, it's actually nothing. It's nothing inventive or, or fancy or anything. All I'm simply doing is taking all of the different providers because I want to have several different providers. I have several different providers, and I merge them into one context provider, and that context provider wraps my whole thing. That way, when I make an update to something in checkout provider, it doesn't affect and doesn't re-render anything in alert or login provider. And this way, if I ever want to have like totally separated context, I can have totally separated context. There's no, there's no reason not to. It's pretty sweet. Uh, again, I'll do a whole video on this thing because uh, this little provider composer thing is dope. This context provider thing is dope. And the whole thing works really well. Uh, the only thing you don't get is like the Redux dev tools in it. But to be honest, like I think you get the React dev tools and it shows context there just fine. So uh, I'm liking it. Um, uh, so are any resources for learning open source internals? Yeah, just look at the code. Uh, there'll be people who do blog posts. You could find like understanding react blog posts or how does react work blog posts, but I don't have anything specifically to be honest. I would just look at the code. Uh, it's all pretty readable. Um, what is, let's see. Okay. So people seem to like the idea for the context. I will make sure that next week. Let's just count on next Tuesday. I don't think I got anything going on next Tuesday. Let's do another live stream about context. That'll be fun. Uh, maybe I can keep this going a little bit. Okay. My SQL with React. Yes. Don't know it. Uh, I use Mongo. I use GraphQL. Haven't used my SQL with React before, but I would probably use Apollo because I like Apollo so much. Okay. Other questions here. This should be uploaded to YouTube. I hope it's uploaded to YouTube. I don't know if I have to do anything specifically, but I think this will be up and you, know, you can watch it. Um, is it possible to change the output to underscore case? Asked Brandon. I do not know about that. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. You could always do it yourself after it pops out of there. But um, yeah, you, you probably just need to recreate the object with an underscore Um, let's see what editor I'm using, using VS code level up tutorials theme and, uh, comments on lazy loading in HTML. Yes. Uh, we just talked about that on syntax yesterday with the episode we recorded. We recorded an episode about, it was like 10 new things in web development or something. I forget the title is going to be, uh, but the, the very first thing we talked about was lazy loading because holy cow, lazy loading is coming into the browser. And that is sick. I'm very excited about that. Uh, the cool thing about that Eddie's money blog post is that he, uh, 
provided like what to do with fallbacks. Here you load this library, you do this little fallback. There you got a fallback, you got a polyfill, whatever. And uh, lazy loading is going to be one of those things we don't have to worry about anymore. You know, just think about all the things that we have to do usually, and and how much easier a lot of it's gotten. Um, between things like lazy loading, it's going to be just like a one liner in your HTML. And I think that fits very well into like the point I want to get across here is that by using this form library, I don't have to worry about the state of the form at any given point. I just have to write the input and the type and maybe additional things. But forms should be easy. Forms in HTML were easy. They don't need to be difficult in React. They just always have been at this point. Um, is Redux dead? Asks Hater. No, no, Redux isn't dead. Redux is perfect for a lot of use cases. In fact, when I was using Redux on level up tutorials, I loved it. I loved using Redux on level up tutorials. The only ways, reason I moved off it is because I wanted to use Apollo in GraphQL for my API. I didn't want to do API calls anymore. I just wanted to have it be all in Apollo. Um, and I could have used Redux just for my state. Like, is the nav open? But that's overkill for that. I think Redux is great if you're managing all your data and everything in it. And certain for the right size of app, is, is good. You know, people always want to throw it into really basic apps, but the right size app is, is a, you know, uh, you, you want to have when you need it, use it when you need it, I guess. Uh, what's your favorite headless CMS? I've only really done headless with WordPress uh, professionally. So I guess I'm gonna have to say WordPress. The API is nice. WordPress API is nice. Uh, I've heard Drupal is actually pretty good for it. I have a lot of experience with Drupal, never done headless. Um, other than that, there's a lot of like backend as a service that I would want to use in the future that Instead of having to host your own headless CMS, there's there's a ton of options. We talk about them on Syntax. Um, um, is there any plans for a React Redux plus TypeScript course? There's plans for a React TypeScript course. Um, I want to wait till some of the other things land in React, but not with Redux at least. Uh, the, this month's course, uh, you'll all hear it here first. I haven't started recording it yet, but it's all planned out. Uh, the course that's coming out in April, I'm announcing right now officially, anyone who's watching, you're the first people to hear this, is going to be on React animations. I'm going to be all about animating in React. We're going to be using only physics-based animations. Um, so none of this, I mean, we might touch on how to do duration stuff, but none of this duration, whatever, easing curve stuff, all physics-based, and it's going to be really slick. There's going to be a lot of uh, interactivity stuff where you're moving things around. Um, very smooth stuff. We're going to be using React Spring. It's my favorite library for this stuff. It's updated to be working with hooks. So we have some hooks stuff going on there as well. Um, really, really excited about that one. I love animating React. I animate React all over the place. Um, okay, let's see. So context live stream, definitely going to happen. Um, do I have a video about my VS Code setup? No, but I need to. I was actually just thinking about that the other day, so that will happen. I I need to do more content on YouTube anyways. I've just been so bogged down with uh, everything, <laughs> giving conference talks and all this stuff. So um, I, I I should be able to get some more output out here soon. Um, Let's see, what else? Do you see anything like V4 coming to HTML, like lazy loading HTML4? I don't. I don't see anything like that coming. Um. I would I, I would rather see like progressive image loading like in a like the way that Gatsby does it where it does a blur in or it does something like that. I would love to see that in the browser, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um what are the cons of React versus Vue? Yeah, Vue's simpler, uh simpler but powerful. React is a little bit more straight up JavaScript. So if you're looking to be a better JavaScript developer, I think React is going to have skills that are more applicable outside of React. Uh, but Vue's really nice. It's really nice to work in. Um, I don't have any beef with either of them. So uh, somebody asked what I ate for breakfast. It's a good question. I don't remember. <laughs> Just been working all day. Um, what else? Oh. Level up tutorials. Again, I have some courses out. If you want to uh, check out some of my courses, leveluptutorials.com. These are the latest ones. Uh, Static view with uh, Gridsome. React hooks for everyone is all about React hooks. Um, Travis Nelson uh, from formerly of Dev Tips did a course on Adobe XD. It's fantastic. Travis is the man. Uh, I'm so, so happy he did this course for us. TypeScript. Pro Gatsby 2, Level 2 Gatsby, or Level 2 React actually has some React Spring stuff in it, but it's a little out of date already. Um, but yeah, 
leveluptutorials.com. You can uh, go pro, sign up for the year, save 25%. I mentioned on Syntax that the prices are going up. They will be going up. The content is going to be uh, released like a lot. There's going to be a lot of content and a lot of new features. So um, price will be going up, but I don't have a due date for that. The due date is whenever we finish some of the stuff we've been working on. Uh, tell Wes, we all said, Hey, from the live stream, I'll make sure to do that. I've already talked to Wes today. I'll, I'll shoot him a message. And, uh, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to stop this one here because it looks like we've, uh, we've gone through everything, but yeah, that's what I got. Uh, if you were interested, check out this library. I posted it in the chat. Um, I'll post it in the description of the video. Hopefully this code has maybe convinced you to check it out. I don't know. I have no allegiance or alliance to this library. I don't know the person who wrote it. I just saw it and was like, that's what I want. That is what I want. So check it out. Loving it. That's all I got. Uh, I will catch everyone on the next one. What is today? Today is Tuesday. So new episode of Syntax is out tomorrow. I know I keep on doing this goodbye thing, but let me tell you what the episode of Syntax is that's going to be released tomorrow. Let's see. Syntax. Let's see what episode we got coming up on the calendar for Syntax on Wednesday. Those of you who are interested, we have an episode. Uh, oh, this is actually great. We just did a live show of Syntax uh, last weekend or two weekends ago at a uh, at the Reactathon conference, and it was amazing. So if you weren't at Reactathon, I think you'll really like this. This Wednesday is going to be the live Syntax episode. It's on React. We uh, Compared to the other one, which is on Jamstack, this is all on React. We talk about hooks a lot. We talk about which websites are using React. We have a thing that's called this or that, where we say, hey, uh, is this an actual React library or is this this other thing? Uh, then we talk about unpopular opinions, overrated or underrated stuff. Uh, we talk about, oh, we do a tag team coding thing, which is more fun to watch on video. And then we ask the audience some questions and then do some really great Q&A at the end of it. Okay, so that is it. Uh, and I will catch everyone in the next live stream. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Get some work done. Code it up. Check it out. Peace.